Tonight's Almost Live is brought to you exclusively in Sultan Vision. <laughs> This whole Sultan Vision thing, my idea. But we thought there'd be more fish coming across. But it, look at that. Woo! Oh, wow! That's cool. Okay, turn off the Sultan Vision now. I mean, you know, we're not trying to make fun. We have great sympathy for all you people in Sultan and Snohomish. You're, you're underwater. It's, of course, that's big news. But there was other big news this week, which was good news for drivers, bad news for hitchhikers, which the 55 mile an hour speed limit. It's all guys, it's gone. You know, it's like. States can set their own limits. That's going to be so great around Seattle, isn't it? Everybody's sitting on I-90 and 405, sitting there all stuck, going like, wow, this is great. Wasn't for all this traffic that's been here for 20 years, we could be going 70 miles an hour. Why not make it 1,000 and we can just dream? It's great. So I guess it's going to be like 65 or 70 around town, maybe 75 down around Kent, Claw, just for tractors down there. <laughs> 90 in Tacoma, 120 on the Microsoft campus. They got a lot of sports cars over there. 13 in Ballard. It's going to be great. You know, get up there. Now. Although, back to the news at hand, the big news with America watching us. Unfortunately, here we are in this part of the country on the verge of being able to legally drive as fast as we want but it's gonna be, everything's underwater. All the roads are going underwater, it's so hard. Look, this is the way people are driving right now, you know, because the limits are still in force. That's in the uh, Snohomish area, Highway 2 or something. But now, the, when the limit is removed, they're gonna be driving like this, like that. That's when the limit goes away. Now, granted, it's going to be tough learning how to drive that fast, you know, with the water that's gonna be, it's gonna be like water world around here. It's gonna be like that. But luckily, we happen to have living in our area the world's foremost expert on driving through water, and he's here to share some of his knowledge with us. So please welcome hydroplane legend Chip Hanauer. Chip, are you back there? <laughs> Look, it's Chip Hanauer. Thank you. You know, thanks. Man. I hope I can help out here. You know, um, you know, because driving on the water can actually be a lot of fun if you know what you're doing. First of all, you need to get your car a sponsor. Perhaps, <laughs> you know, perhaps a little micro brew or something. Uh, <laughs> the other thing is, you know, the, the stickers they put on the car. You know, to, you know, the advertising. Well, it makes the car less porous. And in weather like this, that's important. And incidentally, in my opinion, I think it makes the car look. Pretty damn cool. <laughs> you know, it, as long as you follow these rules, as long as the roads are all covered, everything will be fine. The first rule is, you know, Volkswagens, well, now they're buoys. Just think of them. <laughs> you know, you get to them, just turn on them. Number two, please, don't get on the freeway until you hear the five-minute gun. <laughs> then hit it hard. Number three, don't drive a Miata over 70 miles an hour because they blow over backwards. <laughs> Trust me, I know. <laughs> Number four, if the engine dies, don't panic. Simply get out of the car, stand on the hood, the Coast Guard will be right by, hand you a beer. <laughs> You 
that was, that was a fun one because you know, if you do get home first, take a victory lap around the rent S curves. <laughs> you know, you deserve it. And maybe you know, get home and spray the, the family with some champagne. You know? <laughs> but the most important rule is the race isn't over until I win. <laughs> All right, some wise, wise advice for those of you living up there in the snow home, in the floodplain, which was an interesting place to buy a house when you think about it. Anyway, but, no, but we have, you know, our complete sympathy. I'm not saying that. Each year, as you know, there is some danger of flooding in those areas, but it rarely gets this bad. And to give you an idea of just how serious it's been this week, the rats are leaving Salton. Did you know that? Even the rats which is very serious. Oh, the little rats. Oh, yes, the outpouring of sympathy for the rats. Well, King 5 News has done a great job of covering the floods, and some of the dedicated reporters are still out there, and we want to keep you updated, so let's go live now to Jim Foreman. Jim, can you hear us out there? Jim, I'm standing here on the porch of the car. Oh, what happened to the, oh, the rats, oh. Jim Foreman, yeah, all right. That's great. It looks like Jim's having a little problem, but, you know, we hope it doesn't damage the trench coat too much. So anyway, I think we have a live hookup, I think, with Bill Prasad, who's downtown. Bill, are you down there? That's right, John, I'm standing at, oh! Oh, my, well, gosh. Guess we'll have to check back with those folks in a few minutes. That, by the way, was from the King 5 Tower Cam. <laughs> we have everything. We have the Tower Cam. We have the Doppler, which is going crazy. Anyway, in the meantime, some other th strange things have been happening around the country. One of them has been documented in this made-for-TV movie. Take a look. This week on the NBC Victim of the Week movie. Okay, uh, before we start... Over the weekend, one of us was abducted by space aliens and subjected to a series of scientific tests. Now, alien abductions are a pretty common thing these days, so I don't feel I need to point out who it was because that will only add to his or her feeling of victimization. Of course, that is when people will start to label them as an alien abductee instead of a human being. She's choking me! Now, what did I just say about pointing fingers at people? It's the true story of a woman who has to fight for her own dignity. Oh, no. Kathy Russell stars in Give Me Back My Wee Whippy You, The Beth Haynes Story. Now, Beth has our latest acquisition figures. Beth. <laughs> It's okay. She's an abductee. <laughs> she has to fight for the most basic rights. As Beth's lawyer, I demand that you build a special pod-shaped cocoon underneath her desk where she can take her breaks and lay her space eggs. <laughs> oh, it's okay. She was abducted by aliens. <laughs> I'm telling you, we have to let her go. You're saying that because she's a woman, aren't you? No, I'm saying it because she's an alien abductee and she's Looney Tunes. Listen to yourself. Substitute the word black or Hispanic for alien abductee and see how it sounds. You weren't on that spaceship with her by any chance, were you? <laughs> it's the true story of how one woman defies the odds thanks to the help of a few. Beth, this is Michael Jackson. Uh -huh. I was abducted by aliens, too, uh -huh. and it was great. You are not alone. Uh -huh. I am here with you. Sunday night on NBC. Give me back my wee whippy you. The Beth Haynes Story. All right, we've got a great show.
show, and we'll be right back. So stay with us. And now, the lame list, or what's week this week. Brought to you by America's heavy metal community. Lame! When you were a kid and your face was dirty, your mom licked her hand and wiped it all over your face. Um, that was rather lame. That was, in, in all my years, that pretty much take the top of the list for lame. In chant two, the monks seem to be repeating a lot of the same ideas from the first chant. Vilely lame. Dog lame. Uncompromisingly lame. Swimming in a stinking sea of lame -alities. Because of the damn Boeing strike, your dad's always hanging around the house. <laughs> Lame! Finally finding your entertainment and dining coupon book two days after it's expired. Lame! Apparently the fog comes on little cat feet. Your gig in Duval is now underwater! Lame! Totally lame! lame. Excusable! Totally lame. Lame. This has been The Lame List. Ah, yes. Beautiful, isn't it? And yet you probably believe that aerosol sprays are full of a dangerous chemical that does a bit of this and a smidgen of that and a whole lot of something else to our environment, right? My friend, you couldn't be more wrong. Hello, I'm Neil White of the Fluorocarbon Council. <laughs> now, in the past few years, the fluorocarbon good name has been tainted with accusations and propaganda that don't give you the whole story. For example, did you know that in French, the word fleur means flowers? I didn't think you knew that. <laughs> and I like flowers, and so does my wife. I bet you didn't know that either. But enough about me, because I am here to dispel rumors and restore respectability to that mighty king of chemicals, the fluorocarbon. How do you respond to environmentalists who claim you aren't giving us the facts about the dangers of fluorocarbons? Oh, you mean those long-haired liberal can't keep a job, drain on the taxpayer, ACDC acid head so strung out on drugs they don't know what the hell they're talking about, environmentalists? I respond by saying, let's not get personal, let's stick to the facts. What are the facts about fluorocarbons? Hmm? What are the facts about fluorocarbons? Oh, that's a, uh, a straightforward question, and I like that. And I'm not going to dance around and mince my words. I'm not going to toss off a bunch of double talk and triplicate. I'm not going to say one thing and then turn on a dime and say something totally different. And I'm not going to talk out of both sides of my mouth. And you know why? Because that would only confuse the issue and cloud the truth. And then, my friend, nobody wins. Next question. <laughs> Are you full of crap? Nope. <laughs> I'm concerned about the greenhouse effect. Isn't that caused by fluorocarbons? Well, yes, but have you ever been in a greenhouse? Because if you have, you probably notice some pretty big, strong, healthy plants in there. And that's exactly what the greenhouse effect will do for you. Make you big and strong and healthy. Just like Ken Griffey Jr. Since fluorocarbons are proven to destroy the ozone layer, aren't they bad? See, what most people don't understand is that the ozone we have is really old and really gunky, and we need new stuff. But in order for new ozone to grow, we have to get rid of the old ozone. It's kind of like cleaning your plate in order to have seconds. So the sooner we join the Ozone Clean Plate Club, the sooner we're going to get seconds on ozone. Well, we are just about out of time, so if you'd like more information, send $10 for your free, wonderful world of fluorocarbons pamphlet. And for just $90 more, also receive a complimentary copy of my newest book, Neil White's Favorite Fluorocarbon Recipes. Delivery will take four to six weeks or longer. Good night. <laughs> This is The Late Report. Well, Seahawks president David Baring denies that the team is demanding a new stadium or it'll leave town. Baring says the misunderstanding came following a television interview in which he said the team is demanding a new stadium or it'll leave town. <laughs> Coach Dennis Erickson says the Seahawks will start quarterback Rick Meyer against the Philadelphia uh, this Sunday. Erickson says he's making the move because he wants to see how well the Philadelphia defense can catch. <laughs> Emerge... 
Emergency crews strengthened a dike earlier this week in South King County to keep South Center Mall from flooding. On Capitol Hill, the dikes were reported to be holding firm. <laughs> The Woodland Park Zoo has announced what they call an annual... Excuse me, John. Excuse oh, me. I'm hey, sorry. Yeah, Chip, what is, it? what is it? What do we, what do, we do now? Is there another bit coming uh, up? No, actually, I'm sorry. No, we just needed you. Do you want me to just hang around? No, no, we, we just needed you for, the, uh, for that first bit. I mean, you could go if you want. You mean I could have gone 15 minutes ago? Well, yeah, I guess, I guess we should have said something about it. Yeah, I guess you should have. I guess. <laughs> Busy man. Anyway, the uh, Woodland Park Zoo has not. Oh, it sounds like Chip is on. Uh oh. Oh. Now you see, don't drive mad. Don't don't do that. Take a breath. Be you know, count to ten before you get behind the wheel. <sighs> anyway. The Woodland Park Zoo has announced what they call Santa Breakfast every weekend this month. Now, this is how it works. Every Saturday morning at around 9, a guy in a beard and a red suit will be released into the lion exhibit. <laughs> Boeing. Boeing is talking with Chinese aerospace manufacturers about co-producing Chinook helicopters in Harbin, China. But first, Boeing wants a guarantee that the Chinese workers will take a cut in their acupuncture benefits. <laughs> Como's Dan Lewis went to Toronto, Canada to get an exclusive interview with former Seahawk Brian Bosworth. The news series slated to run next week is called The Hairhead and the Airhead. <laughs> the Portland Narcotics Crime Force is recruiting drug dealers to work as drug investigators. This, in law enforcement lingo, is known as a really bad idea. <laughs> Evergreen State College is now designing a specialty license plate, and they're debating whether to use a likeness of an evergreen tree or a likeness of their school mascot, the gooey duck. Now, licensing <laughs> officials are afraid that the evergreen tree will remind people of Oregon's license plate, and the gooey duck will remind them of Oregon's Bob Packwood. <laughs> Finally, King County is conducting a three-month pilot program of a three-month pilot program. Do you, do you smell that? What is that? Wait a minute. So, something's, something is burning around here. What, what is that? Something's burning. What is it? Hey. Hey. What's going on? Oh, Steve's upset. Well, what's on fire? Steve. Yeah, I thought that she was really funny, that comment about the diaries. Whoa! 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 <laughs> Steve! Steve! Are you all right? I'm fine, John. I'm fine. What are you doing? Well, every week before the show, you know, you guys order out for pizza. And by the time I get there, you're all out of pepperoni. And I love pepperoni. Aw, man, you never... set yourself on fire over pizza? Man, we got tons of leftover pizza up there. What is yeah, the matter you got with goat you? goat cheese and artichoke heart and, and all these other Aww. weirdo ones, but no pepperoni. All right, Steve, look, we're going to get you your own pizza, okay? Pepperoni? Yeah, yes. Just don't set yourself on fire. God. Man, that is... It's weird, man. I just... All right, look, I got to I gotta go do this show here. I got to finish it, all right? Is, it, is there anything else? Fresca. <laughs> There's no Fresca in the machine, John. John, I like Fresca. There's Coke okay. and Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi. We'll be and right tab, back. But there's no Fresca. Hey, hey, okay, but listen. Well, I want. I really think you need to talk to somebody about this. What? Okay, about the Fresca? <laughs> That's just about all the time we have for Almost Live this week. I want to thank uh, the Chip. I think you're the, aren't you the big, biggest champion ever in the history of the sport? No, just happy to be here. Okay, good. <laughs> Chip Panar is here. And uh, just coming up after our show, our good friend and neighbor, Dave Grohl, uh, Foo Fighters, is going to be on uh, Saturday Night Live. And we're just, we're just happy. That, what happened to the Sultan Vision?
Where'd it go? Are we, are we got the little fishies going? Oh, there, there. Okay, feed them now. The show's just about over. So feed them. There's the uh, number to call if you want tickets, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.